Hello and welcome to Crypt of Life Tales Missing Persons. Today we are talking about the disappearance of Kristen Monteferi. On June 1997, Kristen Monteferi was a Providence High graduate who had graduated a year early from high school and recently completed her first year at North Carolina State where she was a part scholar. Kristen moved to Oakland the summer of 1997 to take a photography class at the University of California, Berkeley. She'd been awarded a scholarship from North Carolina State University to spend a semester living, studying, and working in another city. Kristen chose the Bay Area where the family had previous vacation and also she moved to Oakland because rent in Oakland is cheaper. She was employed part-time at the former Spinelli's Coffee Shop, now called Tully's Coffee, at the Crocker Galleria in San Francisco's Financial District during the work week. She also worked at Cafe Muse in the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art during the weekends. She lived with four roommates on Jane Avenue in Oakland, California, at the time and was also taking a dance class. Kristen asked the co-worker at Spinelli's for directions to Baker Beach, which is located next to Land Ends Beach. On June 23, 1997, her shift ended at 3 p.m. that day, but she was seen approximately 45 minutes later on the Crockett Galleria's mall, second floor with an unidentified blonde woman. The unidentified blonde woman with Kristen has never been located, nor has she contacted police. Although police has asked for this person to come forward, witnesses say that she was holding a green Jansport backpack, and um, like Kristen at the time, and also Kristen withdrew money from the bank, a surveillance capture cap a surveillance camera captured what is the long, last known images of Kristen. Now the manager of Spinelli's, however, told authorities that Kristen left the building by herself on June 23, 1997. Regardless, she has never been seen again. She never picked up her last paycheck, which was for $400. Kristen had only been in California for a month at the time of her disappearance. Now, her roommates noted that Kristen did not return home on the night of June 23, 1997, but they did not report her as missing. Several days later, after Kristen's father left a voicemail on the house's landline, one of her roommates returned his call and informed him nobody at the house had seen her for three days. Now, the roommates state that they didn't want to get Kristen in trouble in case she was with a guy. That's why they didn't call her parents to report her missing. Um, also, Kristen's rent was $500. She had given the roommate in charge, whose name is Griffin, her rent in cash. He said he couldn't accept cash and to get a money order. She didn't get a chance to get a money order, at least that's what Griffin says. I should also note that the house on Jane Street was in foreclosure and the roommates only had about four months to stay there. Now, her parents has made numerous trips to Northern California, handed out flyers, put up billboards around San Francisco, and even consulted a psychic. There's also a website about Kristen's disappearance and the $50,000 reward in that case. Police used dogs who tracked Kristen's scent to Land's End's Beach. However, it was a couple of days after she was reported missing, so they could have tracked her from a time prior to her disappearance. So Kristen's balonies were also searched and a newspaper personal advertisement from the San Francisco area was among her possessions. The advertisement contained the following messages. Um, Females seeking friends to share activities who enjoy music, photography, working out, walks, coffee, or simply the beach. Exploring the Bay Area. Interested? Call me. It is unknown if Kristen placed the advertisement herself or if she answered the ad. It seems as if Kristen placed the ad since she was new to the Bay Area and was looking to explore the area and meet friends. Um, But it could also be said that um, it was someone else's ad and that maybe that's why she was seen with this unidentified blonde woman. Maybe she answered the ad and she met the woman there at the mall. An anonymous caller contacted KGO-TV 
the ABC affiliate in San Francisco on July 10th of 1997, approximately two weeks after Kristen was last seen. The caller said that he knew the identities of two women who abducted and murdered Kristen and placed her remains under a bridge in the Point Reyes area of Marin County, California. His story was that two women killed Kristen in a lesbian love triangle. And he went into a lot of detail about who they were, names, and places. Which is sounded suspect because Kristen was not known to be a lesbian. Um, friends, family, no one says that that she was a lesbian. So, the women in question told authorities that they believed the phone caller was John Unuma. A suspect in Kristen's disappearance. Now, the females had apparently been harassed by John Unuma due to work related problems they encountered with his girlfriend at the time, Jill Lampo. Now, the women were preparing to fire Lampo from her position when John Unuma allegedly began harassing them. Law enforcement officials questioned him about the incident and he admitted to making a phone call to KGO TV to cause problems for the women. Now, uh, Numa said he never met Kristen, and Jill Lampo said she hadn't met her either and couldn't prove whether Numa had even encountered Kristen. Now, another female witness came forward and stated that John Numa allegedly abused her and threatened to kill her after Kristen disappeared. The witness said that during the encounter, John Numa told her, Now you know what happened to Kristen Montefiore. Three other women stated that they had incidents involving John Anuma and Jill Lampo as well. Jill Lampo allegedly lured the victims to Anuma and were subsequently abused by him. Authorities searched Anuma's residence and discovered Lampo's journal, which was missing pages from the time Kristen vanished in 1997. Now, it is not known if either Anuma or Lampo is connected to Kristen's case and no one has been charged with involvement in her disappearance due to a lack of evidence. Now, John Unuma has since moved to Hawaii. Now, it was reported that he was evicted from a house he was staying at in Hawaii and that um, in the attic was a brief a case of his that was found and it contained uh, clippings of Kristen's disappearance. So, you know, who knows? You know, he does, maybe he was just collecting it to collect it. Who knows? Or he possibly had something to do with her disappearance. Now, in 2015, the Montefiore is connected with a private forensic investigator and his canine. Paul Dosti and Buster the Canine, who specializes in finding hidden graves, took another look at the Jane Avenue property in Oakland, where Kristen lived with roommates. Buster sniffed the human decomposition chemicals and alerted Dosti to a drainage pipe downhill of the home and at the vents around the basement. Now, Dosti said that there was human decomposition present, 100%, and that was in June 2015 that they... Um, did the search. Now the Oakland police brought in specialists from Chico State and they used ground penetrating radar in the basement. Now based on that, an area of interest had, was found and um, they did come back and perform a dig, but the dig didn't reveal anything. So Dusty returned in February of 2016 and brought with him Dr. Vass, a research scientist and forensic anthropologist at Oak Ridge National Laboratory and he specializes in human decomposition. Now, Dusty had developed a device that detects human decomposition chemicals and um, he used it to pinpoint an area between the two Oakland houses at the base of some porch steps. Now, DNA was found within um, these human decomposition chemicals, which was a match to Kristen. And additionally, a chemical signature denoting the presence of human blood was discovered near a concrete slab at the base of the porch steps at 278 Jane Avenue, according to Dusty and Vass. Um, but um, it's still, as of yet, nobody has been found. And um, so Kristen's case remains unsolved at this time. Now, Kristen's act was introduced by Representative Sue Merrick in 1999 
and signed into law by President Bill Clinton in 2000. Since April 2001, Kristen's Law provided assistance to law enforcement and families in missing persons cases of those over the age of 17 and authorized a million dollars per year to support organizations including the National Center for Missing Adults. If you have any um, if you have any ever, well any you know if you know anything about Kristen's disappearance, I will leave the information in the description box below the, this video. Um, also, if you know of any kind of tips, also Oakland's police missing person information will be in there as well. Um, I was noting too with Kristen's case, you know, it's been 20 years, and her family do believe that foul place, uh, foul play was involved with her case because they said that they you know that if she was still alive, that she would have contacted them. You know, my heart goes out to Kristen's family and friends. You know, because I this has to be very just devastating. There's no body found. They don't know in, what happened to their loved one. No one has any kind of concrete evidence, you know, stating what could have happened to her. It's just a lot of speculation. Um, theory number one, I would say, would be that the roommates definitely know more than what they're saying. Um... Who knows? There could be some foul play involved with one of them. Um, the blonde woman that she was seen with could have been someone that was sent by them. This is just a speculation. It's all allegedly. But I'm just throwing that out as a theory. Theory two would be um, perhaps the ad that they found in Kristen's uh, belonging that the unidentified blonde woman did... Um, meet up with her she was someone from the ad and some foul play was involved with that it could have been some kind of lure that ad would, could have been some kind of lure put in the paper to lure an unsuspecting victim um so you know that is a theory as well there was also another theory that they had um the family had placed out too because at that time it was a lot of issues going on with um Robert Durst and you know he was a cross dresser and you know he had a couple of people that he had been known to had you know caused their disappearance so it was a thought that maybe Durst had something to do with the case and maybe that was him dressed as the unidentified blonde woman but the family, you know, the witness who saw Kristen with this unidentified blonde woman said that the woman was a younger woman. So I think that probably axes out um, thirst. But, you know, again, who knows? So again, um, my heart goes out to Kristen's family and friends. I pray for resolution in this case. And um, I definitely pray that one day they find their loved one. And thank you so much for listening.